Hey everybody, Carolina Weather Authority meteorologist Mike Griffith here. It is Wednesday, August 12, 2020, one of the most dreaded years of our lifetime, perhaps, depending on who you are. Uh, it's about 8.36 p.m. here, and we want to talk to you tropics. That's why you clicked on this video, because you want to figure out, uh, is there going to be an elevated threat for... Uh, the Carolinas this year in hurricane season, and yes, and that's what Josh and I have been saying. Uh, make sure you check out some of the other videos on our channel here. Make sure you hit the subscribe button uh, down and to your right right there. It should say subscribe. If it says subscribed, we thank you very much. That means you're already subscribed. If it says subscribe, go ahead and hit it. Uh, thank you so much for doing that. It's free, and it'll make you... Uh, uh, it'll make us more available to your uh, YouTube uh, subscribers. You'll have a little notification at the bottom that whenever we post a new video. Okay, so we're looking at what could be a potential future Josephine down the road if it, if she actually uh, develops um, and heads this way. Uh, not really going to be a whole lot of uh, concern for the Carolinas because there's going to be a whole bunch. There actually is a lot of dry air, and there's a lot of shear up in here too. You can actually see the... Um, upper level cloud movements on IR satellite and this is actually indicative of wind coming from this direction and if this storm moves this way well it's going to shear the tops right off of it so we're not really uh, that concerned uh, overall with uh, with, with uh, uh, what, what could be future Josephine tonight. Uh, the latest National Hurricane Center advisory is going to have her as a tropical storm probably tonight. Uh, I want to say maybe at the 8, 8 p.m. Uh, advisory. It should be coming out any minute now. Uh, as At the time of this video, um, we're still looking at the 5 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time advisory. So uh, even the National Hurricane Center thinks that she's going to be a depression uh, here by the end of this weekend that just could be shredded to bits. Um, nothing really overall uh, to be to be too concerned about here uh, Carolina Weather Authority uh, we're not really concerned about her at all uh, so right now she's tropical depression 11 L uh, could be Josephine here uh, in fact she already could be by the time you watch this video and uh, this is a fizzle it looks like according to the models uh, they look like they're kind of like a frayed hair on a humid day uh, so if you're having a, she might have a bad hair day it's really humid in the tropics so uh, she might not uh, really survive the trip uh, too much longer or past this weekend. Now, we did have some concerns as far as uh, down the road, but what's coming behind, uh, jo but what's coming behind uh, potential Josephine here. And if I can just uh, get it up on the uh, map here, all this uh, clicking. <sighs> okay. This is what I want to show you right here. Here, this is the GEF GEFS ensemble. Uh, so it shows like a cluster of the center of uh, low pressure, of low pressure systems on a different bunch of different model runs. So there goes potential Josephine. There's something coming behind her. Uh, I don't think that we have to really watch that one, but we have to watch this wave coming off of Eastern Africa around the 16th or so, uh, which is late this weekend. So uh, what's going to be Josephine here will probably fizzle out. Uh, it might, you know, linger for a little while, but just, you know, going to take off like out to sea more than likely. Uh, but there is something coming off the off the shore here of uh, Africa uh, later this month. And we're looking at a potential wave that could develop here uh, anywhere between the 20th and 25th or so. Um, really a widespread in the uh, GEFS right here, but... Uh, with this activity coming off the coast of Africa, uh, we're definitely thinking it could be something to watch. I mean, as we go uh, farther into the end of this month, uh, this is uh, becoming more of a concerning uh, pattern for us here. So let's take a look at the actual uh, GFS here, and let's take a look at what uh, this model has uh, future Josephine doing, just becoming a... Um, uh, a ripple pretty much is an area of low pressure by the end of this weekend uh, there are a couple more waves coming behind her and not really showing up that great on uh, the G GFS model uh, but here's a couple waves coming off the coast of Africa around the 25th that we have an article out about uh, that we're definitely going to want to keep an eye on uh, overall shear across this area let's take a look at 
the uh, shear anomaly here. This is what we're concerned about. Uh, the GEFS, the GEFS, and the GFS, those models aren't going to be great at picking up tropical waves and how strong they are right now. But in the next, uh, well, the next like couple weeks, uh, especially from the 26th to uh, the 2nd of September, we're looking at a lot of the shear starting to relax across the South Atlantic, which is concerning. This is even negative shear uh, right here. So anywhere from no shear at all to a very relaxed uh, atmosphere. And all this in here is going to be grounds for development. Uh, so anytime after the 25th of August, we could be looking at some kind of development out here in the main development region, which is referred to as the MDR. And the, anything that comes out in this area could blow up very, very quickly. Um, so the only thing that we're looking at right here that might have sh save us down the road is there's going to be some uh, a little bit of shear, um, uh, maybe like late September or so, but that's still too far enough away to uh, give us any clues. But this is looking uh, kind of nasty here across the main development region, anywhere from uh, 26th of August all the way to the 2nd of September. Um, but like right now between the 19th and the 26th, it's still not looking too great. There's still a lot of shit, but it's going to relax um, after the 25th or so. So anytime after the 25th uh, into the first week of September, maybe even through the middle of September, uh, we could be looking at favorable conditions here across the main development region uh, for a major hurricane to take a path more like this or like this into the Gulf. Um, so either one of these two tracks right here is going to be scary anytime between uh, August 25th and the first week of September. So maybe into the uh, 15th or mid-September. Mid so so this is just looking, um, you know, if you live anywhere in here, all the way down here, all the way in here and through here, you're going to want to, I, I would say probably more like in through here, uh, but anywhere along Florida, all the way up to uh, the Carolinas and even eastern Virginia, maybe maybe the Delmarva at the very northernmost, you're going to have to pay attention to uh, some of this uh, developing um, conditions uh, later this month. Not right now, uh, but in a couple of weeks is when we're going to start watching uh, for something uh, very major to happen here. So looking at the uh, overall ocean analysis, uh, sea surface temperature anomalies, Still very warm right off the U.S. coast here. Uh, this is compared to normal, so it's almost like uh, hot water, bath water out of here. It's just raw fuel for a storm to rap rapidly intensify as it gets closer to the United States, which is going to be what could uh, help it keep uh, Category 3 or even Category 4 strength as it gets closer to the Carolinas right here or Florida. I'm not picking on the Carolinas, but... This is the type of pattern where you kind of see them come up to the U.S., southeast U.S. coast and to do this kind of hook right here, uh, which you've already seen so far with Isaias. And I promised I wasn't going to say that uh, name anymore. But I did uh, because I have to use that as an example of what type of pattern we're in right here. So this is going to be concerning here. Remember the date, August 25th, anywhere between then and uh, the middle of September, conditions are going to become very favorable for major hurricanes out here in the main development region. Southeast coast needs to be on alert uh, pretty much every year, but this year especially, especially with NOAA's elevated hurricane forecast, uh, which is uh, what we've been talking about ever since May. Uh, take a look at our website. Um, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel here, please. Uh, we thank you very much for doing that. Check us out on uh, Facebook at Carolina Weather Authority and um, also online at our website, uh, which is uh, carolinawxauthority.com. And make sure that you uh, view our latest blog, all our articles. Um, and uh, here's all our stuff right here. Here's the main articles. Here's the, what we talked about with potential major hurricanes. So make sure you check this out on our website. And our models page also, it's all, almost like a spaghettimodels.com uh, similar. Uh, you can have a whole bunch of uh, tools at your hands right here. Just make sure you uh, take a look at this as well. That's all from me. i got to run tonight. It is Wednesday, August 12, 2020. I am meteorologist Mike Griffith for Carolina Weather Authority.